Hi dear Truth Warriors, welcome back to the channel. I'm Petra Van Dale, life coach, breathwork practitioner and advocate for survivors of emotional and narcissistic abuse. It's been a while, I just checked my last video, I think it was uh, sometime in June and uh, there's just been a lot going on, my practice has been very busy so thank you to all of you who have signed up for breathwork classes, for coaching programs, for one-to-one -one conversations. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. And uh, besides that, I've just been going through some personal stuff. So it's just been a hectic couple of months. And um, I've just found the time, thank goodness, to reconnect with all of you. I've missed making videos. I've missed responding to all your comments and responses uh, to videos. So thank you again for joining me. Today I want to speak about uh, the responses that a narcissist gives when you expose them. Now I'm sure most of us have gone through this when we have um, uh, dislodged ourselves from a very toxic relationship, whether it's a family a relationship, friendship, a romantic relationship, we all go through the phase uh, and have the urge to expose what we have been through, to expose the narcissist. And of course, I mean, you are in your right to have the urge to want to expose them and to expose them as well. I've done it. I've done it on, on my channel um, where I've exposed all the narcissists that have been in my life. They have recognized themselves through my videos. Um, and uh, I was met with rage, just utter, unadulterated rage. This is one of the responses that a narcissist will give when you expose them. But, you know, part of the exposing, I, I often say to, to clients, and especially in, in the last, I would say, year or two, um, I encourage clients to just leave it alone, to not expose. And yet, on the other hand, it's very human to want to get other people who are around us, whether it's mutual family or friends, we want them to see our side of the story. So, of course, we're going to repeat our stories over and over and over again. It's part of healing. When you want to tell your story all the time, it's part of your healing. But it gets to a point where people just cannot they don't have the bandwidth anymore to listen to your story, to give your advice. And this is simply uh, not because they don't want to, not because they don't support you, but because if you have never been through it, as may be the case for your mutual family, friends, uh, they have never been through it. And so they do not fully grasp the impact that narcissistic abuse has on you. So, of course, that's a whole other video, but for today, I wanted to focus on, I've just taken note of five, five responses from the narcissist when you expose them. Now, you must remember that narcissists um, are always out to protect their egos. They have a very fragile sense of self, um, and so they're going to do everything in their power to protect that. It's wanting to be seen as Mr. or Mrs. Goody Two Shoes. They want that the, 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 they profile themselves to the external world as being this wonderful, charismatic, friendly, loving, spiritual even person. So this is the mask that they are going to want to maintain for the longest time. So when there is when they they their self uh, esteem is jeopardized, they will go to great lengths, sometimes very extreme lengths, to uh, downplay your story and to make you look like the abuser or like some crazy person. They will go to great lengths. It's their ego that's fragile and this is what they are wanting to protect. They're not interested in what, an, uh, what another person goes through what you have experienced through their abuse. They, uh, th there is no conscience with them, so they do not feel the pain that um, you are going through. They do know that you are suffering, but they just don't give a damn. 
They just don't. So there are going to be five different ways in which a, a, a narcissist responds. And one of them I just mentioned where uh, there can be utter rage, just utter rage. It can become um, physically violent. It can become emotionally violent or they turn up the heat on the physical and emotional abuse. This is one of the ways they deal with the fact that they have been exposed. Because at the end of, a, of the day, the narcissist knows who they are. They know that they have very abusive behavior. They know that they manipulate you. They know that they intimidate you. They are just bullies and very much aware. I don't believe there is a single narcissist who is not aware of their behavior. So, um, the first response, I've just put them in random order, but one of the responses um, is denial. They will flat out deny what you tell to mutual friends or family or business associates. Um, you're trying to explain your story. You're trying to tell other people what you've been through. And this gets back to the narcissist. The narcissist will totally deny that because of their ego. So it's either denial or they would twist the facts to make it look like you are the abuser and that you are the person who needs to be in a psych ward. That's one of the ways. Total, utter denial. And they can do it with a very straight face, with a poker face. They are so convincing. And this is part of the control that they have. This is the manipulation, of course. They can say it with out battering an eyelid. So, total denial. The second one that I just touched on twice is the rage. They will go into complete rage. Can be so explosive, can become very physical, can become even more emotional for you. Um, in some cases, they will show up at your homes. Um, or, you know, or just, and, and maybe not even get physical, but just by um, letting you know that they are either outside your home, waiting in the car, waiting around the corner, whatever it may be, can just be their presence that sends you into this spin of confusion, of anger, of sadness, and of fear. So this is another way that they can manipulate you, simply by being silent. The rage and the silence are two of the most manipulative ways that a narcissist responds, uh, not only in the abusive relationship, but also when they have been exposed. A third response is playing the victim. So they will convince those mutual friends, those mutual family members, they will convince them uh, of their in innocence. And they do this in such, you know, the, the abuse is so insidious. They can convincingly convey a story or twist the facts that they will get everyone on their team. And th this, is, this is why a narcissist uh, will play the victim. It's to get those people who um, should be invested in you, your family, your friends, the narcissist gets those people on their team. Because of their fragile ego, they feel that they need backup in order to bring you down. So the victim plane um, may even um, um, mean that they acknowledge some of their abuse, but again, they will twist it to say, well, I had to do this, or I had to say this because you were behaving in a demeaning way, in a cruel way, in a nasty way, so I had to respond in a certain way. So they acknowledge and then they downplay it again. This is all part of playing the victim. A narcissist, as you very well know, as I have come to find out, will never acknowledge the fact that they have abused you. Never. They never take responsibility for their actions, for their words, or for the way they show up and interact with other people. The fourth one, the fourth point, fourth response is avoidance. So they will get word maybe of the fact that you are relaying your story to other people. 
and they will totally avoid that by just ignoring it. Doesn't mean they don't feel it on the inside. They feel it because again, their ego is being jeopardized. Their mask is, um, is shaky, it's starting to show cracks. So they will just completely ignore it as if it didn't happen, as if you don't exist. And oftentimes the mutual family or friends uh, get very uncomfortable when there is when they realize that the narcissist is avoiding the situation or avoiding the story that you were telling. And so by family members or friends avoiding this as well, they play into or because, sorry, let me just rephrase that. Because the family members or friends or whatever mutual contacts feel uncomfortable by doing so and by remaining silent or choosing the side of the narcissist um, is playing into the avoidance behavior of the narcissist. So it becomes very, um, very uncomfortable for you, for myself, when I tried to further uh, expose the narcissist, is that um, even more resentment is cultivated because it seems as if no one is willing to validate our stories and they can't. I mean, let's, you know, let's be truthful about this. Um, outsiders cannot validate our stories because they simply haven't been through it. They get to see one side of the narcissist. You get to see the true side of the narcissist behind closed doors. So when people, especially people who we have been invested in, whom we love, when they don't validate our, validate our stories, um, this creates a lot of resentment within us, a lot of anger, a lot of uh, a sense of being invisible. So just know, you know, when, when this occurs, it's very important to remain standing on your truth because it's your truth. This is what you experience. And by avoiding this whole situation, the narcissist is trying to make you doubt and question what you experience with them. So don't even go there. You know, this, this is where you build up your self-esteem and your self-trust. When you trust yourself and trust your experiences, this uh, puts you in a position of being the, uh, the conqueror of what you have been through. When you show your vulnerability, especially to the narcissist, they are going to use that against you. And when this is used against you, that's when you doubt yourself even more. A fifth response to the exposure is that uh, the narcissist will inflict guilt on you. How dare you spread these lies, for example? Or they could say to you, why are you trying to break our family apart? Another very common phrase is, after all that I have done for you, how dare you speak ill of me? How dare you drag my name through the mud? So this is all twisting, again, twisting the facts, because what they are guilty of, what they have done, they are going to project onto you and inflict the guilt. Now, this is up to you to remain, once again, standing in your truth and know and trust what you have experienced. Because all narcissistic abuse is based on, ang on, on fear, I'm sorry, on fear, on guilt and on shame. So when they realize that they are losing control of you because you are exposing them, they are going to tap into these three things, the fear, the shame, and the guilt. Turn up the heat on these uh, uh, three emotions in order to get you to shut up and stop telling your story. So it's very important, you know, when you're trying to relay your story to, again, mutual family and friends, and they don't validate you, or you realize you get a sense that they don't truly believe you, because they too are confused. What is the truth? Who is telling the truth? Is it the narcissist or is it you? Um, when this happens, it's very important to um, 
deal with the guilt, the shame and the anger. This is something that you need to deal with. It's all projection. The narcissist is projecting their fear, guilt and shame onto you. It's not even yours. It's not even real. So what we often do when we are in this stage of healing is that we um, just go into that tailspin of feeling the fear and the, the guilt and the shame. But it's allowing those feelings to be there because what we often do is try to, either we go and, and wallow in these three emotions or we try and deny that we, we're feeling these emotions, we shouldn't be feeling them. The truth of the matter is you are feeling this emo these emotions. And the way to deal with this is to sit with them, to allow them to be there to look at the shame, the guilt, and the fear. And shame is an emotion that um, is cultivated in the dark. So looking at your shame is to bring it into the light by talking about it. And in this case, it's talking to people whom you trust, talking to someone who, um, who is not attached to your situation. So for example, a therapist or a coach, someone who's completely detached from your situation and they can talk you through this emotion of feeling shame. Shame is a useless emotion because it implies that there is something wrong with your essence, something wrong with who you are. So you need to process this, to speak about this shame, to work through it, bring it into the light because that's when it loses its power. The same is for the guilt. Now with guilt, if you have truly done something wrong, guilt is playing into your uh, uh, conscience. So when you know you've done something wrong or, you, or you've said something wrong, you can look at that and, and acknowledge the fact, okay, I've done something wrong. I need to apologize to this person and make amends. That is what guilt is. And what the narcissist is doing when they, um, when they inflict the guilt on you, they're trying to t make you take responsibility for something that you haven't even done. So in this context, do not play into that. It's not your guilt. And yes, sometimes, you know, when our bush buttons have been pushed, when we feel like we've been driven into a corner, then we will take on the guilt that they are trying to inflict upon us. And we will make everything, uh, we'll make all of that about ourselves and um, try and apologize, try and make amends. This is what the narcissist wants, even though he or she knows that there is nothing to be guilty about. And when our buttons have been pushed, that's what I wanted to say. See, I've, I've lost my train of thought there. When our buttons have been pushed, then um, uh, we go into a state of reactive abuse. This is what it's called. So we raise our voice, we lash out, we say nasty things. I'm not condoning this behavior, but it is a normal response to abusive behavior. So look at that guilt. When you're feeling the guilt, is it truly my guilt is what you can ask yourself, or is it the projection of the narcissist's guilt onto me? And when we look at the fear, it's the same way a narcissist will instill fear in you because they want to control you. And fear is a very destructive way, of course, of controlling you. Um, and it's a very easy way for the narcissist to use as a tool to get you to do exactly as they want. So it's to look at that fear. You know, all these emotions that come up when we've been through an abusive relationship and when we are on our path to healing, we need to acknowledge these emotions and feelings we're going through and work through them. And sometimes the most loving thing you can do is just to allow those feelings to be there. Don't try to fix them. Don't try to change them. Just allow them to be there. Because when you uh, put up resistance to what you're feeling, that's when the feelings and the emotions become even more overpowering. So I just sidetracked there for a moment. But the topic, of course, of the video is the narcissist response to being exposed. So again, let's just go through the five. 
Number one is the denial. They will deny everything that you say about them. The second one is the rage or the silent treatment. The third one is playing the victim. The fourth one is avoidance. They will completely avoid the fact that you are telling your story. They will ignore it. They will downplay it. And the fifth one is inflicting the guilt on you. So when all these things come up, when their responses come up and you realize this, of course, what is again human behavior is try and defend yourself. Uh, so you tell your story uh, ad nauseum even more. Um, at some point, you have to realize that telling your story to people who just uh, are invested in not understanding you, whether they are not willing to or simply because they cannot, because they haven't been through it, then you have to um, decide for yourself when your story is enough. When you've told it 10, 20, 30 times, there comes a point where you have to top, stop telling the story and focus more on yourself and your own healing because you cannot change the narcissist. The narcissist will never change. This is who they are, this is what they do, and nothing you say or do is going to change that fact. Another point I wanted to touch on is those friends or family who don't believe you, who a victim shame you, who blame you, because this, this also happens. Those families and friends, family and friends who do that, you need to question, are these the people that I want in my life? Because someone who truly loves you and who is truly invested in you will believe your story. They will take the time to listen to your story, take the time to just hold space for you even though they cannot help you through it, because this is very specific abuse. But they will be willing to sit with you in those hours, in your deepest despair, those long days and long nights. They will be willing to go through this with you, even though it's even if they're just holding space for you and not giving advice. So when you realize that some family members and friends um, try to avoid you too, they take the side of the narcissist, then it is up to you to question those friendships, to question those rela relationships. Because people need to earn the right to your story. Not everyone is entitled to your story. I hope that has helped some. Uh, thank you for patiently waiting for new videos. And um, I'm going to try and make a point of uh, uploading more videos, um, you know, with less in between time, because three, four months is just ridiculous. I miss making them. And um, I know you miss them too. A lot of you have uh, written me emails to say, are you okay? Is what's going on? You're not making videos every, anymore. Have you closed your practice? No, none of that. It's simply a lack of time. Thank you for your patience and uh, take care of yourself. And always stand in and on your truth. Love to all of you.